Okay, how's it going everybody? Uh, Robert here. This is attempt number five at recording this video. I decided to switch up my software to Camtasia instead of uh, EasyCap. EasyCap's a great software, uh, or no, Cam Studio. Cam Studio is a great software. It's just, it's giving me some audio save problems. Um, vi this video today is just to talk to you guys about compatibility when it comes to computer parts. It's generally pretty simple. Um, uh, it's not hard to do it's uh they have websites that will do it for you but it's uh pretty simple overall to figure out if they're compatible or not um please subscribe to the channel if you guys like this video uh like the video favorite it leave me a comment positive negative i am interested in everything if it's negative i'd like to see how i can improve so just let me know um let's get started as you can see everything's already in my cart so let's remove it you're going to want to start with a computer case. Uh, cases don't matter as long as you get a mid tower or, or a full tower. If you're getting a, into a ATX XL motherboard then you're going to need a full tower. Um, normally I just go with uh, the Corsair 600T Graphite. Uh, great price. Uh, it's a little bit, I mean it's a little bit pricey but it's a great case. It comes with some uh, great cable management options, lots of drive bays, fans it's it's just a good looking and well built case a quality quality built case uh next thing you want to need you're going to need is a, a cd or dvd or blu-ray drive um this is up to you if you do a lot of blu-ray watching ripping uh burning onto blu-ray drive d discs get the blu-ray if you don't use blu-rays like i don't um get a dvd drive it does not matter what kind you get because they're all basically essentially the same um, right here, this Asus one, basically get what, whatever one's available or whatever one's cheapest. Uh, the differences are minuscule and you're not going to notice it as much. Uh, next thing you're going to need is a hard drive. Again, this doesn't matter as much. As long as it's a SATA hard drive, you'll be fine. Um, nowadays, a terabyte is about, on average, what people should get because... Um, it provides a lot of storage for a decent price. 75 bucks isn't bad. And you get a full terabyte a Seagate Barracuda ST1000DM003 hard drive. 7200 RPM indicates the speed the hard drive spins at. So like, the faster it spins, the faster your computer runs overall. The faster you can transfer files on and off that hard drive, the faster you can run a program, start up your computer. The bigger the number, the better and that's in the simplest terms I can get it so let's add that to our cart uh, pop-up window no go away pop-up window next thing you're going to uh, get is a processor normally I centralize the build around a processor so let's go to processors let's go to Intel and I'm gonna go with this one right here um, really it's up to you when it comes to processor if you guys want an entire uh, video on which processor you should get for which needs I'm gonna do it I'll probably put that up either later today or tomorrow, so that'll be the next video. Um, basically, this this processor is quad core, meaning it uh, has four cores inside of it, four physical cores, and then it has a thing called hyper threading. Basically, hyper hyper threading is uh, when the processor it tricks your computer into thinking that it has two cores for every one core it actually has. So there is uh, four physical cores and then there's an additional four virtual cores so technically it's an eight core processor and it helps out a lot with performance the um, these this right here the 3.4 and 3.8 is basically just the speed at which the processor runs um, 3.4 is what it's normally at 3.8 is what it goes to automatically when it's under a heavy load like gaming um, the only real number you need to learn from this one is this right here, the LGA1155. That's the socket type, and that's how you determine if it's uh, compatible with the motherboard. So just remember that number, LGA1155, because now we're going to go pick out a motherboard. Um, let's go to Intel, because we have an Intel processor, and then go down. See how it says CPU socket type, and then you see LGA1155 right here? Click that. All these motherboards will work with that processor. Personally, I don't like spending below like 90 bucks on a motherboard because if you go lower than that, you're going to get a cheap one and it might or it may or may not break down. I can't say that it will because uh, 
maybe you'll get lucky and you'll get a cheaper board and it'll last you five years um this board i i, I do like uh there's e77 series boards uh asus it has four memory dims two pci express slots this one's a 3.0 this one's a 2.0 they're both exactly the same meaning you can have two graphics cards and then it has all the extra ports and all right here are all your SATA connections that's for your hard drive your DVD drive your um, SSD if you choose to do that this right here is your USB headers where you plug them into the front of the case and all this is your other headers for the power the reset button the LEDs they go to the front of the case as well and uh, the cool thing about this motherboard is it has U USB 3.0 way faster than 2.0 so it's a great motherboard and um, let's add this to our cart and remember when I said uh, just remember that number this motherboard says LGA 1155 that means the processor fits in it the only other uh, number you need to know from this to s uh, for compatibility is the, this right here the memory standard DDR3 and then all these numbers you don't need to remember them all uh, basically these are just the speeds at which your memory runs um, personally I go with 1600 because it's cheaper and it works well so for the sake of this video just remember DDR3 1600 and now we're gonna go pick out our memory go to desktop and um, on the side you can over here on the previous page you can pick uh, the amount of memory you want Normally, uh, 4 gigs is enough to game, but I would go with 8 gigs just because not only is it double, but it will provide better performance, and if you ch ever choose to get into the editing scene, you're going to need a lot of memory. 8 gigs is not that much when it comes to editing. Trust me, uh, my current system has 8 gigs, and I am looking to upgrade it because it's too small. I do uh, editing with Sony Vegas and uh, Photoshop, as you can see, Vegas, Photoshop so 8 gigs will start you off and the Corsair Vengeance series of memories is badass it's great memory very reliable and all you have to look at here it says DDR3 1600 that means our motherboard supports it that means it'll work with the motherboard and you won't have any uh, compatibility issues so let's add that to our cart next part you're gonna need is a power supply um, right here it's not all that important what you get as long as it's a I always recommend a single 12 volt rail pow uh, power supply. If you want to add a graphics card to your system later, notice the motherboard we picked out had two PCI Express slots. That means two graphics cards. So say you ha you want to buy one right now, and you just stick it in there, and then you plan to buy another one down the line. Get a slightly more powerful power supply to accommodate for that so that when you want to replace the graphics card down the line you don't have to go out and buy a brand new power supply just to add the new card right now the lowest you really want to go with the power supply is about 500 watts when it comes to adding a graphics card into your system um, the GTX 650 Ti boost uh, is the one we're going to pick for this build and it is uh, it requires I think 500 watts of power and um, you can pick a 500 watt power supply out and you'll be fine or you can pick this uh, the first one right there the 800, uh, 850 watt and you can add the card later down the line just plug it in and you're ready to go meaning you don't have to tear out your power supply put a new one in that's more powerful just to put in a new graphics card uh, the only real important numbers to see if it's compatible on the, the power supplies um, as long as it's enough power for your build it's fine um, I always recommend the single 12 volt rail because uh, it's more reliable, more power, just better overall. And then you need to know if it has a, sorry, um, uh, you need to know if it has a PCI Express connector. So see right here where it says PCI Express connector, and then it has six times six plus two pins. Uh, this is good. That means it has six of these. Uh, they're eight pin connectors basically, and uh, most graphics cards either use the six pin or the eight pin that's why it's six plus two that means you can get the eight pin you can pull the two off and just like separate them a little bit and plug the six pin in as long as it has at least two of the six pin you'll be able to run a low-end graphics card 
the higher end ones run two eight pins normally and the mid-range can run two six so and if you intend to add another graphics card you're gonna need more more uh, connectors obviously so this one has six that means it's gonna run multiple graphics graphics cards without any problems let's add that to our cart um, next thing last thing uh, video cards go to desktop graphics we're gonna pick out the GTX 650 uh, Ti boost which is right here um, it's really up to you what you want to spend on a graphics card the lowest you want to go is a gig of DDR5 memory that'll ensure that you can play most games nowadays on decent settings um, but this is a really good card for what the what you're paying for it. It's $179 and you get 2 gigs of DDR5 memory. I'm using the GTX 650 right now, the regular one with 1 gig of DDR5. And it plays most games nowadays, but in a year, I'm going to have to upgrade because it's not power it won't be powerful enough to run the next generation of games. So, just make sure it has a decent amount of memory and it says PCI Express 3.0 that means it's going to fit in our motherboard so let's add that to our cart and actually let's go back um, right here this is the SLI connector and uh, that means you can attach it to one other video card notice how it only has one that means it's only two-way SLI compatible meaning you can only have two cards you can do three-way with this specific card if it has two then you're good like uh, let me show you uh, what is this? The 7990? 7790. Uh, let's see if it has it. How many connectors? This one has one too. Dang it. Uh, yeah, here we go. This will have it. Um, yeah, notice how this one has two. That means it's um, three way SLI compatible. Actually, no. One, two, three yeah it's four way okay so you can have up to four cards on this one and I mean it's really unnecessary especially since only the higher end cards usually have the double SLI connector the single will do you fine um, let's do a quick overview the case the hard drive and the DVD drive as long as there's SATA these two you'll be fine notice how this says uh, SATA and SATA SATA um, that means it'll work with the system the case doesn't matter as long as it's at least the mid tower um, graphics cards uh, at least uh, as long as it says PCI Express 3.0 it's uh, it'll fit in this motherboard because if we go to the motherboard we go down and it has a PCI Express 3.0 slot notice how it says one right here that means it has one and we can even click on the picture, go to the picture, and here it is, right here, this blue one. See how it says PCI Express 3.0? This is the 2.0, but they're the same slot, so you can use them uh, for the same function. So that means our video card is compatible. Let's go back to our card. Um, the RAM is compatible because it's, notice how it says DDR3. As long as it's DDR3, it'll normally fit in just about any system that is, uh, DDR3 compatible uh, your motherboard um, the speed doesn't really matter most motherboard support uh, generally the all speeds a thing notice how this one has them all and then it has the overclocked version so it supports up to 1600 regular and then it supports all these overclocks this is why I chose the 1600 for this so as long as this is DDR3 right here and your memory is DDR3 and it has one of these numbers next to the motherboard you'll be fine um, last thing compatibility wise is the processor to the motherboard like I said as long as it says this LGA 1155 and this says LGA 1155 that means it has the same socket that means the processor will fit in that motherboard and they're compatible otherwise that's really it guys when it comes to the monitor the keyboard the mouse and the speakers that's up to you as long as they're USB you'll be fine um, yeah that's basically it uh, you don't really need much more to build the system I mean you can add an SSD but if you want me to get more into that I can do it in the next video that's it for today guys uh, I hope you enjoyed the video 14 minutes Jeez. Um, have a great day I'll talk to you guys next time if you guys have any comments leave them down below questions concerns 
go ahead and leave it. Thanks, bye.